All right. Uh, so good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about uh, next uh, next uh, uh, few sorts, uh, which are mm, interesting in that way that they are mm, faster than the sorts we had previously. So we started with relatively uh, slow sorts, and now we are trying to get more and more uh, faster sorts. And maybe, unfortunately, there will be some trade-off because the sorts will be fast, but they are not completely general. We cannot apply them in, uh, in any situations, as we will see. Uh, so let us start uh, with uh, the uh, classic uh, Radix sort. And uh, the, now the organization of the data is a little bit different. Now the data are unsorted on the left side. Uh, from top to bottom, you can see that there are some uh, items which obviously do not, are not sorted. And those items are strings of the same length. Uh, to, uh, to have somehow a manageable size of the presentation, uh, the strings, the length of each string is uh, uh, exactly three. Uh, uh, as uh, we will see the, the idea how the sort works, uh, it will be obvious that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the length of the string can be expanded to any, uh, to any size. So now at the moment we've got just uh, three uh, characters in each string and the strings are totally unsorted. Uh, we want to uh, sort uh, this array of strings and now uh, what, uh, what do we do? Uh, step one. Uh, strangely enough, we start at the end, and in the first uh, in the first phase, which is on this slide, we work ac only according to the last symbol in each string, and we just uh, we just don't pay attention to anything else. So we start at the top and then we work through the, uh, through the array and we create an additional structure which is here on the right and which seems rather big and complicated, but fortunately it isn't. Uh, so what is there? There are a few lists and each list uh, is named after particular symbol which does appear in the uh, in the strings. So again, in a real life example, we would have much more uh, these uh, stacks or lists uh, because each will be uh, will be labeled by particular uh, character A, B, C, D, E, F, and then uh, small letters, capital letters, uh, digits, and uh, and uh, additional symbols. So that will be whole alphabet, so it will not fit uh, on the screen, obviously. So we have only uh, four, uh, four symbols uh, here in this example. And now, uh, originally, those uh, yellow, uh, yellow lists are empty. Uh, then what happens that we go through the, uh, through the uh, input array, look at the last character in the first element, and take that element and store it in a appropriate list, which list, of course, the list which is labeled by the same character as is there in that particular uh, item. So there is a B, so CBB, which is up there, is stored there in list named B. Then we move through the array and do exactly the same stuff to each, uh, to each uh, uh, item, look at the last symbol, uh, move that uh, append that particular item uh, to, the, uh, to the list on the right, which is labeled by the last character here. So DAD appears there. Number 3ADB uh, appears in, uh, uh, in the in this list, well, of course, uh, it, is, it does not appear as first because CBB, which was originally first, is already there. Then ADB is added and so on. Uh, DCA goes into A list. CCC, capital C, number five, uh, goes where it goes uh -huh, into there, into, uh, into C list and so on and so on. 
Finally, the last one, ACB, appears in the list labeled B, and it appears there as the last element because it is the last element which uh, we do anything to. And as you can see, what, uh, what happens uh, now, uh, the, uh, the blue numbers are the, or are the original numbers of the items in the, in the array, and the yellow numbers are the uh, uh, represent new order of the item. So, what, uh, what we now see? Now we take, if we take uh, the items we already processed in the order shown by these yellow, uh, yellow arrows, then you can see that, again, it is far from being sorted, with only one exception, that if you look on the last, uh, last elements, it is sorted uh, by the, the whole, uh, the sequence is sorted by the last, last character, A, then B, then C, then D. So, okay, so something, a part of the work was done. So now take all these, uh, all these uh, uh, items in this new order and again store them in, in a new array or maybe an additional array here on the left. So everything what was here now goes into the input array. Uh, so that's the next slide, and uh, here on the next slide we see that uh, the original uh, contents of the right side of the uh, of the slide a a b b b b and c and d are already uh, are already stored here. So we've got here a new order of elements, and and what do we do? Uh, we apply an analogous idea just by uh, concentrating now by the second symbol, or in this case, it is also the second symbol uh, from the uh, end. So now we concentrate on uh, C, B, B, D, D, A, and so on. So, uh, and the system is the same. So as you can see, we again have got uh, some number of those empty yellow uh, yellow lists and go in to take the first element, DCA, who is in the middle, there is character C, so into the list labeled by C, there goes the first element, DC. A. And again, we go through all the elements and append them to, uh, <coughs> to their uh, corresponding uh, list. C, B, A goes into uh, into B list as first, CBB goes uh, into the same list and uh, appears as next and so on. Finally, last one is DBD, so it goes into DBD as last, as last, as the last element. And now the, the cycle is repeated again. So what we do is we say, aha, and now in the yellow order, uh, this uh, and in the yellow order, which is shown by the yellow uh, yellow arrows, we can see that. Well, we don't see it nicely now. So again, we take all uh, all those elements in this order and store and store them in the input array, which is shown on the next slide. And when you look at those elements, which are in the uh, on the left, which has uh, gone already through those two cycles. So if you uh, now imagine for a while that you forget the first uh, character, the rest is completely sorted. If you just somehow, which I am not able to do here on the screen, uh, somehow forget the first character, everything else, uh, else is sorted. A, B, A, D, B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, and so on, last R, last R, D. Uh, so we have partially, in some sense, partially uh, sorted the input array. And what should be more or less obvious now that if we perform the same uh, action as we did uh, before, when we sort by the first symbol, the result will be completely uh, sorted, uh, sorted list of strings. Uh, because, uh, because first, of course, we will, uh, we will uh, fill all these, uh, all these lists, and then taking the first list, in the first list everything starts with A, and 
all items, all the strings in there, uh, they are in fact, they already were sorted before we uh, started this phase. They were already sorted by the second uh, and third, uh, third character. So therefore, therefore the, they are sorted in list, in list uh, with the name A. Then there is the list with the starts with which starts with B, list which starts with C, and so uh, and so on. So uh, doing that, uh, doing that, uh, this uh, thing just three times, we get a sorted array, and there are some obvious pluses to uh, to what we have done. Uh, because uh, the complexity of the whole sort was very uh, very uh, small. Uh, what we did, we had n items, n items, uh, each of length, uh, each of length d, and during the sort, uh, the, the sort, each character. Character examine exactly each character was examined exactly once, and we arrived at uh, at the sorted uh, sorted array because uh, just we were reading as we were. Uh, as we are move, uh, uh, rearranging the uh, these uh, the items, so we we were just in each phase we scanned the input array and looked at the particular character, and according to that, uh, we uh, we just move it into appropriate uh, appropriate uh, list. Uh, so uh, so there obviously the complexity uh, complexity. Complexity is then uh, more or less obviously n times d, and now you might st might stop for a while and say, "I just wait a moment." Just wait a moment. It looks nice, but there is a lot of added work. In fact, what were we doing? That we are first we created all these. Uh, lists. Okay, we in each step we have to create uh, uh, create empty lists, fill them one by one. So we were in fact physically transferring items from the left side of the slide to the right side of the slide. So that's some additional work, uh, and of course, uh, and yeah. Uh, and who knows how much work has to be done if we do it in each step. So somewhere behind in the memory, you again have to free the, uh, all these yellow lists before you start next step. Uh, then move the elements from those lists back into the input array. So there is a lot of additional work plus large overhead. Uh, because there is a uh, managing, uh, managing, managing uh, lists. Uh, manager, we have to empty it uh, again. Uh, have to uh, uh, make them bigger and bigger. Append elements there. Transfer elements back to the input array. Many times, d times. Managing lists, d times. D times how many lists? Are my, how many lists? How many? Uh, how many lists? How many lists? Of course, the number of lists. Uh, the, the number of lists. Of lists uh, is equal to the size of our alphabet we are using, and uh, that's equal to the size of the alphabet. Alphabet, which if you are uh, if you are uh, working in well, some kind of real uh, life application, that alphabet might be Unicode. 
for example, and in that case, you are going to create about 65,000 uh, 65, mm, lists or something like that, because you don't know which Unicode symbol will be, will be there. Uh, so, in fact, you, we are arriving at a quite uh, complex uh, sort, after all. So, at the beginning, it looked nice, and then there is uh, all this additional work which makes it uh, rather, uh, rather uh, difficult to manage. Uh, oh, on the other hand, if you are not, uh, uh, if you are in, uh, in, uh, 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 in uh, ASCII, then, then it's, no, it's not 65,000, it's about 128 characters. So if you have 128 lists, then maybe that it is not that bad. Uh, so, uh, so that looks uh, generally unpromising. Uh, so uh, this large overhead has to be somehow reduced, of course, to get something, as to get a better results, reduce, uh, reduce it, and that's what we are going to do on the next slide. Uh, the first idea of the whole of the whole reduction is that we will not move the elements at all. We will, uh, as we get these. Uh, this input where we started at the beginning, this is the input, we will not move it. We will only change uh, change some references to particular symbols. I mean, we, we will do it in the way which is shown on the next, on the next slide. So this is the unsorted input. And after we perform the sort by the last, the, the step of the sort by the last element there, we obtain these four, now they are a bit more squeezed uh, to a smaller space. Uh, at this, we obtain four, in our case four, uh, these yellow lists. That is the list of A containing DCA, DC, where it is DCA and CBA, and there is list for B containing CBB, and three is ADB, and so forth. So this was uh, this list. So uh, now how do we do this uh, third uh, or the first step we, we did at the beginning? Uh, we will not implement these lists. These yellow lists simply are uh, just conceptual, not real, and we will uh, do the next. Uh, take the input array and create an array of, let's say, pointers, which is the same size as the original. And it will uh, contain just uh, these integers, which will point to some positions. And there will be one another uh, table or uh, okay, let's uh, let's call it table, which is indexed by the alphabet. And uh, the first column of the table is called star. The second column of the table is ca called the end. And this uh, this big uh, this big array called the next serves simply as uh, a as a system which contains, in fact, all of these yellow yellow lists. How do they do it? Let us take this example list called B. Uh, it contains first element uh, from, the, uh, from the unsorted array CBB, then the third, then the seventh, then the tenth, and thirteenth element. Uh, what, how, do we, how do we store this information? We say, okay, we have these elements which are on the left, we will just refer to them by their ordinal numbers, one, two, three, four, up to 13. So we will know, we will say, okay, the list which, uh, which index is B, it starts at position one. Why? Because the first element there, CBB, which is in it, has its original position is one. It ends at position 13, so the last element uh, which is in yellow B is uh, the 13th element in the input array. And in the meanwhile, uh, how do we access the remaining elements? We use the next uh, array. 
uh, we move from the star, which contains number one, move to the first uh, position in the uh, in the in the index array, and there at the uh, at the position one, there is the uh, there is the ordinal number of the next element in B, which is three, as you can see. So you move to position three, and on position three in the next array, you can see there is seven. That is just because original. Uh, original uh, list uh, contains uh, contains element number seven, seven as the next one. Uh, next comes uh, next comes ten and thirteenth element. So you from the third uh, third position you move to seventh position. Here at seventh position you know that the next element is uh, on the tenth position and on the thirteenth position. Uh, sorry, and on the 10th position, they uh, have to move to the 13th position. And on the 13th position, there is zero, something like no uh, null uh, reference, uh, uh, telling you that after 13th element, there is nothing in the in this uh, in this list B. Uh, you might uh, do the same, for example, for list D. It starts at position two because that's the first D. So in the table start and end table, we start at position two, move to position two. Who is next? Next is somebody on position six. After position six, there is somebody on uh, position 11. And on position 11, there is after that, there is nobody. So we had two, six, and 11, as those are, as they are written here, two, six, 11, which are the AD, ADD, and the DBD in the original, in the original array. So now having uh, this representation, we can squeeze all these yellow lists into uh, into this system uh, system on the right, uh, so we can perform first step of the uh, of the sorting by uh, using this auxiliary uh, auxiliary uh, data structure. Uh, so what we have array next array uh, next its size is n. And uh, then we have this additional table, table start, this and end, start, uh, and end. Uh, it is uh, two times size of the uh, 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 alphabet. So this is already much more survivable than the previous. Uh, than the previous situation, uh, but so uh, those are strings. Uh, the input, uh, the input values are strings. So typically, your strings are not uh, their length is not just three. Typically, it, you measure the length of strings in who knows tens or hundreds of uh, of characters. So in fact, uh, the, if uh, those are n items, but each length is d uh, so uh, so our array array next which contains only integers and each of those integers takes typically four bytes so it is more or less the same as four characters let us say uh, so uh, its size is in fact uh, typically much smaller than the size of the input array so the size is n but those n are integers those are integers. Uh, those uh, those are integers. So uh, so it is typically uh, sh should be much smaller, uh, take much less memory than the input array. Uh, the same holds for for the uh, starts and ends. Two times size of the alphabet. If you work with uh, with your small alphabet like uh, ASCII, so then it is two times uh, 128 uh, times four uh, four uh, bytes uh, for each uh, for each value. That is exactly one kilobyte. So it is negligible. In fact, if you work with Unicode, there are you you have to multiply this by eight. And you are again, and one, you are at one megabyte or something like that. So again, it is, it is, uh, it's as survivable, especially if you have big, uh, big data. Uh, so, uh, so the memory overhead is not that bad. 
Uh, and what did happen that we aha uh -huh, and of course uh, uh, our our reduction of the uh, of the memory space did not alter it does not alter the whole uh, the whole method so the method works exactly as it worked previously and the number of actions we do when we process each element uh, so uh, what do we do well for example imagine that we are just adding at the moment this last element into uh, into uh, uh, into list b so at that moment at that moment this 13 would not be still there it would be 10 instead so inserting uh, 13 we will have to increase this value and to note or write it down at position 10 that the next uh, element will be uh, element number 13 so we have to change this value and this value so we change uh, just two uh, two uh, two numbers there when we add one one item into into this yellow into one of these yellow lists so uh, we did not increase the uh, the complexity of manipulating one element we just we just uh, touch uh, and uh, and change two or uh, three integers in each uh, when we when we register each item uh, so uh, so that uh, that looks nice and what uh, would you do now so okay so now we've got uh, this after first uh, step and now we want to perform the second step so uh, yeah, yeah, uh, how to do it so now our partially sorted array is somehow reflected in the structure on the right but we have to now go through uh, through these elements in the order of yellow uh, yellow uh, arrows and again create it, uh, create the, uh, the, the, the structure which corresponds uh, to the next step in the, in the whole sort. So uh, there is uh, no, no help. We will need a copy of uh, this structure because now we, we have this. This is our resorted array. So we have to, we have, to have another copy of, of uh, this, uh, this thing and uh, and work uh, work with it so we will do it in a moment before that i will just show you the remaining slides which will remind us exactly what we have already seen so uh, uh, so this is the uh, description what we have already seen so there should be no much new information here the array of pointers after sorting by the third character, we don't move the original uh, original data, so it is uh, just once more said uh, said what we all, what we have already seen. Uh, another one, another one. Uh, what does it says? It says that we will very probably need two copies of uh, those uh, additional arrays. This one and uh, the other one and each time we perform one step of the radix sort that means moving all the uh, all the items from the input array to the uh, to the list to the sorted lists to those yellow uh, yellow lists means that we uh, scan uh, all uh, all uh, values on the left not of course from the top uh, to bottom but in the order given by uh, by the values which are already inside and as in the first step we store the the newly sorted or new, new, the the elements in the new order we we store them on, on the in the other in the other uh, array <coughs> yeah so uh, uh, so the, the, this uh, this picture just uh, just reminds you how it looks after sorted by the first symbol so the 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 final uh, final situation when everything is sorted a starts at position 13 uh, uh, who is next 13 it starts three uh, next is eight six thirteen and eight and uh, no it's 13 uh, three no 13 goes to three a c b 
ADB, then there is a ADC. Yeah. So this is just uh, just tells us what we have already seen. Only uh, only it is a little bit a little bit more uh, crowded picture than uh, than before. Uh, so uh, let us see how the you know, how the uh, uh, the general step is done, uh, which is on the uh, on the next slide. So we've got the original input array, which may, is not sorted. We have no uh, absolutely. We don't change the original order. Here already is the the new order is redefined, sorted by second uh, symbol, and now we go uh, and sort it by the first symbol. Uh, so what we do, uh, uh, so now it's simply, uh, we cannot see it. Uh, so uh, what is inside uh, slot A? Inside slot A there is value 10. So we've got B, A, B. Uh, in, so this is slot A. Uh, there we've got B, A, B because it's position at position 10. And next one is uh, at position 2. At position two is D A D, D A D. That's at position two, and there is nobody, uh, no, uh, no, no one more. Who is at position uh, B? Uh, B starts at position twelve, so that is C B A, C B A. Next is on, at position one. It is D A D. That was just nonsense. Which is C B B? Excuse me. C, B, B. Next is at position 9, B, B, C, B, B, C. After position 9, we've got position 11, which is D, B, D, B, D. And at position 11, there is nobody, nobody else, zero says after that position. So, uh, and for C and D, we will have the uh, the, the, the similar stuff. Uh, now, what do they do? They, of course, go uh, through uh, through these elements. And what they do? They fill uh, this system of there is the start and the end for each character, and originally the uh, the uh, array of next. Uh, the copy, not the copy, but the same system as on the left is originally empty. So, what do they do first? Uh, what do they do first? They have to. Uh, they have to uh, uh, look at uh, now from uh, uh, from second uh, to first uh, character. So now it is sorted by uh, by the second character. So going to first character means that we go uh, through this uh, system, which is in here, and take the first element and store it where? Of course, we have to store it in there. In, in it looks like that rather in uh, in slot B. So we have to put uh, B, B A B there rather this way. Uh, B A B. And what does that mean? That we have to know that uh, slot B, resulting slot B, starts at position, uh, at this position, where is B A B, where is, uh, where is he? Of course, he's at position, uh, at position 10. They start at position 10. And the uh, end for time being, it will be at position 10 as well. So the, uh, the example continues. So we take this uh, BAB element, which is at position 10, and tell them that it is here in the, uh, in the uh, list named B, and that list named B, therefore, will start at position 10, and also end at position 10. And here, because there is nothing next, so this, uh, this uh, array still remains empty. Then you take DAD. So again, DAD, the first element is D. Therefore, and at, at which position it is? Well, we started at 10, and then we have to go to 2. So there is this DAD at position 2. So we're going to start and end D, and D is, uh, uh, is there. So this is... C, this is D, and we've got D, A, 
and the uh, there uh, and this moment and now as you can see uh, nearly uh, nearly uh, nothing is happening so then we take cba and cba has to go there cba it seems to me and cba b starts at position 12 CBA, uh, yeah, well, we have uh, we have uh, uh, scanned the first two elements which were in list A. So now we are moving into list B. The first is CBA. Uh, we know that it's that is at position twelve. There is CBA. How uh -huh, good at position twelve? So uh, uh, who is at position C? It is at position uh, twelve there because there's cba this cba is here at position 12. all right therefore we've got it there and next is cbb cbb has to go in here so now this list contains more than one element therefore after that we also register that after cbb and we do not know which one it is or we know it because when when we are in this b in here we first started at 12 then we went to one uh, there is the cbb so it is at position one uh, and therefore one appears here as the uh, as the next one of of uh, of 12 and it is also the end of uh, of we are in the in the c list First starts at position 12 and then it ends at position 1 and so on. There you've got this B, uh, B, C, which should appear in here, B, B, C. Therefore, what's happening that after 1, sorry, after 1, we have C, B, B at position 9. That is this B, B, C. Uh -huh. So in the, uh, in the resulting in the resulting uh, situation we have to take uh, bbc and store it as number nine up there which comes after which one which is in b where b starts at 10 so now the next will be nine and position 10 will be nine and so on so step by step going through these lists which are hidden in the on the left system we slowly fill the system on the right when we do it and when we move to the next phase when we work with the fourth fifth seventh and so on uh, 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 character in the in the strings we just uh, empty empty one of those uh, one of those uh, we we empty the previous sorry we empty the previous uh, the previous uh, system the, on the right there will, there will be new system and then we just swap them around left and right and take the uh, the, uh, the currently filled uh, currently filled system as the input as the input one it is shown on the it is not shown on the next slide uh, so but uh, it is finished uh, from second symbol to sorted symbol so this process which i started here is finished here on the right this is a resulting uh, this, this is a resulting array which tells you what where we begin, begins a begins at position 13 as before and so on 13 after 13 the next element is a that is three sorry that is A, D, B, then comes position A, as you can see there, and so on. Uh, so that's the whole, uh, the whole idea is just implemented, uh, implemented using this. Uh, additional arrays, forgetting the original lists, and that's, uh, that's it. So it is relatively easy to, uh, to develop, and uh, also it is relatively easy to implement so let's see the implementation which strangely enough is not uh, that difficult it, again it is presented in this pythonic a little bit pythonic little bit not pythonic uh, way because python of course was not uh, developed as a tool of presenting algorithms but i hope that does not matter uh, so what do we do to uh, do some radix sort 
uh, they, well, it looks big, but it is because we've got, in fact, too many arrays. As we can see on the previous picture, we have, uh, we have uh, one, two, three that we uh, consider this table to be two separate array, S array and E array. And then we have got this array of next uh, pointer. So we've got three arrays on the left and we've got three arrays on the right. So that's in total six arrays. So we have to manage six array and therefore the, mm, the uh, the implementation looks long, but it isn't. Uh, so first, we, of course, just have to create all those uh, arrays. Uh, this is the S as source, probably. Uh, e, no, no, it is not source. E, S, E, as start and the end. So we have this alphabet, uh, alphabet size. Uh, so those are those two small arrays and d is the is this next array why they call it d i don't know idea uh, but uh, this d uh, they call this part a d uh, that's not, but it is not capital d oh, they, oh, let's uh, call it d why call it d i don't know idea uh, so uh, so you just uh, create those array and uh, be happy uh, then uh, you, you perform one step first passed with the last character where we go from the input array we go and store uh, store uh, things in our in our uh, system uh, in our system so the first step where is that first step probably here uh, well, here is the first step unsorted from unsorted uh, unsorted array we want to get our uh, our first uh, first step assorted by the last character uh, so that uh, that is done uh, in in this first uh, first step and then uh, repeatedly we just what we do we do one uh, radix step and then we swap the arrays the uh, the source and the target arrays we just swap them after performing that uh, step as you can see we even don't have to uh, to clear them i think that we even don't have to clear. We have to. Clear, we even don't have to clear them in those uh, in those implementations. So uh, so that's all we have to do. Uh, finally, there is the output. When we go again, when we go uh, through this uh, system on the right and print the elements one by one, starting with element at position thirteen and ending at, with element at position seven, which is DDB, which is the biggest one. Uh, so uh, this output is just output, so it's not part of the sort, of course. So what is important is the initial step and general step, and they, of course, are nearly uh, nearly the same. Uh, the initial step when we have uh, an unsorted array and we are creating the system of list, what do we do is uh, uh, so we don't do near we don't do nearly anything. So we uh, take. Uh, last character in the string, that is our position in the string, position three, two, one. Uh, and then we go through, uh, through uh, the length of a star. So we fill the table. We just fill uh, this table, so we do initialize it. In fact, as you can see, we fill it with minus ones. Why? Uh, because uh, because they say caution, uh, the arrays in the code are indexed from zero, and the array uh, in the code are indexed uh, from one, which makes no sense. The arrays in the code are uh, uh, are indexed from zero, and the arrays not in the code but in the in the pictures are uh, are indexed from one so there is uh, just uh, fill uh, no begins and no and so far and then we just scan all the elements in the uh, uh, in the array so we take uh, we take original array uh, at uh, at current uh, current element and at position, which at the beginning is the last position of all strings, the last character, and then we, uh, accordingly to the character, just uh, just note in which list that particular character 
at position i will go so if start is uh, is undefined we say okay start and the end will be at this position for our current uh, current current element which we are trying to uh, so this is input uh, that is our uh, element i position is uh, is there uh, and we are just looking at this element that is uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, which is ai pos ai pos and then we take of course the uh, the number which which character it is one two three four one hundred twenty eight so we take ordinal value of that character so this tells us into which of these lists uh, this element must go uh, and if uh, if already that if he is still that list is empty like for example we've got that uh, let's see if that is still empty and that is capital C, then uh, this element should go here. Uh, so, uh, so you say, okay, uh, okay, the list of C is starts and ends on uh, at this element. Otherwise, if there is already something in, the, for example, here, uh, if there, uh, if already there is something, what we do when we say, aha, take the end. Where is the current end? Uh, and to D, which says who will be the next, uh, we just put the, uh, the current one. So when I moves here, you can see, for example, B here. So now you say that you want to append uh, this thing, you want to append here. Uh, it's just does not matter, of course. Uh, you want to append it. Uh, so that means that the list. Uh, that the end of the list which corresponds to uh, to the character we have just read uh, will be exactly at this position, and of course the uh, the next has be uh, has be uh, set has to be set uh, set uh, to be uh, accordingly. I hope uh, I hope uh, that. Uh, this is more or less obvious. You go to the previous and, take the previous and, and there say, okay, you are not and, you are followed by, uh, by, uh, no, by uh, element at position I. Uh, so, uh, so that's it. Uh, but, uh, there's no, uh, not more to it except for uh, for the last general step which is uh, in fact absolutely the same as the uh, as our initial step which was which was here it looked shorter but if you look at this uh, uh, end, uh, end this end part the uh, the second part you will find it uh, here as uh, as well and what we do that we have now we have to scan uh, our uh, our uh, uh, arrays uh, arrays and fill the uh, the, the the second uh, fill the copy of array so uh, what we do again that is the uh, initial stuff and then we again go through all elements and then we are here we are not going through the input array but we are going through our system uh, system of lists so we start go take a start uh, a start of uh, of uh, of uh, what uh, take start uh, of uh, this is the uh, the S, so take start. So we go, we do not go through the uh, uh, original array, we go through uh, this thing, of course. So this is S, so we start here and then we move to, to element 10, after then we move to element 2, and when we are ready with these elements, we move, we are uh, going through, uh, uh, through list. 
which starts, which corresponds to B, it starts at some position, and so on. So that is reflected exactly here. Take the start, and if there is something, the list is unempty. So then take where, which one is that element? Now J is the, that particular value, and now J is the real number, a real index of the of the element in the in the source. And with that element, what we uh, what we do, we just now go uh, through the whole list, which corresponds to uh, to one list uh, uh, characterized by one uh, one character at given position. So this is this while true. You can see that at the end uh, of this list, we uh, uh, each time uh, uh, we each time take J and set it to the next element which is in this uh, uh, horribly named uh, array d so we are moving through all this uh, through all elements in one list by this and of course when there are no more uh, no more uh, elements in this list that is the current uh, current element is at the end uh, current index is the same as the end index so then we break of course and then we try to to work with the next uh, with the next uh, uh, list that means the break appears after we have processed all uh, all elements referred to by uh, by one uh, row in this start and table. Uh, so the, the, that is there, and what is inside is exactly what we have done before, just increasing, uh, just increasing this list. Uh, so that, uh, there is no uh, no more uh, no more to it. Uh, so they uh, they nicely uh, summarize it uh, down here. Say uh, no, this D is uh, no. Oh, maybe good. So there are these symbols. Uh, these symbols. So how many uh, symbols we do have? Uh, so that's the number of loops we have to perform. I have already t told it uh, to you. So uh, the, this, there are uh, the, that number of loops. In total, we have exactly theta d times n operations. And of course, is if d is small, if you have millions of uh, of strings, each of which length is uh, about ten or twenty or thirty, uh, then of course, uh, then of course, uh, more or less, you might say it is more or less likely uh, linear in number of uh, of of items you have to sort. Uh, the stability is there. The stability, yeah, stability. Uh, should be more or less obvious because we uh, each time we process the elements in the order they were in the input uh, in the input array. So we did not change, of course, that order we did not change. So the stability should be more or less obvious, and uh, that it is. Uh, there should be some uh, note on uh, where we do add the. Uh, the in the space is no aha, uh, and you say, well, in my in my practice, there are some elements like this: a, b, d, a, c, c, d, uh, d, d, b, a, d, a. So, uh, if you've got if your strings are of different length, which you say, well, that's very natural that my uh, strings are or, of different length, and I want to use a radix short C B D. Uh, then you say, aha, so uh, to apply a radix short on uh, this situation, you say, all right, let's let's stuff with uh, everything with the uh, with uh, the trailing spaces. So you put there some uh, trailing spaces down there, uh, just to make each string as long as the longest string in your uh, in your uh, in your input array. So this, if this is your uh, input, so you add uh, add the trailing trailing uh, spaces. So 
achieve same length, same length of all strings of all of all strings. And well, and when you do this, then you can apply uh, radix sort again. You again, you might want to think about some improvement where you would not infer. Where you will just when processing some particular. Ah, particular uh, position when, of course, uh, when that string, uh, when that string is shorter, you might add uh, add some piece of code into the uh, into the code we have seen already, which will check if that particular element is shorter. So you would not go explicitly to this position if that position is undefined for uh, for that string, but. It does not more or less matter. This is the easiest fix when you have different lengths, uh, and maybe you can improve uh, the code as well. Maybe, maybe it is even uh, might be even simpler, or maybe even faster. It will maybe run even faster uh, because this typically means, on average, that you will again expand each string, and that takes time whatsoever. Uh, so there we are, uh, uh, and so it is fast. So typically, if you have strings which are relatively short, relatively uh, short strings, strings, many of them, many of them. Then, of course, uh, the radix sort is, in fact, best choice. Uh, radix sort, radix uh, sort uh, is very efficient. Very efficient. Uh, efficient. And when you've got a, an efficient so sort, you may say, OK, but I've got integers. I want to sort my integers. And I know there is this quick sort and merge sort and whatsoever, but my strings like 260, 36, uh, 17, 8,426, and 100, and no, 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 uh, 653. So on, as uh, those are your integers, but those are in fact when you write them down, those, those are strings. So what you can say, okay. So if you fill uh, now, you uh, now you say we will uh, we will append to no append. We prepend a leading spaces uh, to each uh, to each string two three six with one leading space uh, two spaces seventeen. Uh, eight, four, two, six, uh, and there is a second leading is six, five, three. So when you take this, you can put it into radix sort, and the radix sort will do its job in two, in four passes in this case, uh, isn't it? We go there, we go, broom, 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 and it, well, radix sort. Uh, will work. So let's say we have n elements. Now we have four digit, digits. Well, let's uh, digit, digits. So uh, digits. Uh, four digits. So so a radix sort. If we have n elements. A radix sort will work. Do n times. Uh, it will work in n. Theta n times four, which is of course, which is of course theta n. Uh, there you are. There you have your uh, your sort, which is linear. Uh, you have to do some uh, pre uh, pre processing, which costs some time. So be careful, uh, uh, because you have to take the the number somehow make it into a string prepend this uh, this spaces at the beginning and then apply radix sort and then again change those strings into the output uh, into the output uh, uh, integers so that means that you will again do uh, uh, 
need a lot of time and some additional memory uh, to, to process it. So remember, there is this additional memory. Yeah. Now, memory. Now, that additional memory, well, this is this short, will be comparable to the size uh, of the input array. There is this additional memory. Uh, there are, uh, fortunately, there are only a few, uh, few digits, about 10, uh, with the space uh, 11. So, your additional tables will be relatively, you, you will be very small. Uh, this, uh, the table there uh, at the top will have just 11 lines. Uh, so the, that is, so it is big question if it will be faster than your standard quick sort. So faster than quick sort, faster uh, than, for example, quick sort, quick sort. That's a question. So it much more depends. If you if somehow well, maybe if you've got uh, if you've got numbers between values uh, values uh, between for example uh, one hundred thousand and one million then of course everything will be of the same length and you will know you don't need prepend and uh, those uh, spaces so uh, that might uh, that might somehow uh, make your make your sort a, a little bit faster if you go for a radix sort and the last uh, last uh, notion is which uh, which you can uh, sometimes, aha, uh -huh. now the last notion is that if you want, uh, really want to go into this erratic sort, you might say, all right, but why take each, uh, each digit uh, separately? Uh, radix sort processes this in four loops. N let us process it in, in two loop, in just two loops. You can take, you can represent each two consecutive symbol as a, as one symbol. You have 100 symbols, each of which looks like, like these two. So you can, in fact, you can, if you easily survive a, a alphabet of size 100, it's nothing, nothing to, uh, when compared to Unicode, for example. So you might say, aha, so that is even, uh, even easier. Or, or you might say, I can, that will be difficult. I, I can uh, interpret each internal word in the memory as uh, as a particular character, but uh, but that depends on the length of the word. So, uh, so I would not comment on that too much. <coughs> but uh, that is one simple, this simple improvement how you can uh, even reduce the number of uh, of loops of the uh, of the radix sort. You create two consecutive symbols as one or three or four, uh, but then, of course, the, uh, the size of the alphabet grows fast. But if we had, for example, only these four symbols, uh, symbols, only four symbols, then if you take, for example, six, uh, three, take uh, three consecutive symbols as one, t uh, symbols as one, symbols as one, uh, therefore you would need three times less uh, passes of the uh, of the radix sort, which again will increase your speed, and then you will have, of course, instead of four, you will have four to the power of three, which is, oh, which is not that big, if I remember, it is uh, sixty-four. Uh, so, so it's funny, small, uh, small uh, alphabet symbols, uh, symbols. And you can go even uh, four to the fifth uh, is with just one thousand and so forth. So uh, that's uh, that's radix sort. Let us see uh, our uh, other assets we have uh, still to uh, still to investigate. So the uh, the radix sort works like that. And now, of course, the problem with radix sort is it is very difficult to apply on uh, on floats. Radix sort, radix sort is difficult. That means slow good, to apply, apply on 
floats. That means the number which are numbers which are not integers. Uh, obviously, an example shows why seven thirty two point zero one zero point zero four two zero one uh, one uh, or twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty five point forty one so now you cannot uh, you cannot uh, do the radix or the radix or the idea says okay but you then need what you would need you would need to append spaces down there you would need again to prepend some spaces up there so there of course you must have uh, the decimal dot in all cases in the same column of course and when you're doing that, so this is rather long, and the, and the conversion into strings, again, is even longer than the conversion if you go with the uh, work with, uh, with integers. So when you do that, then, and your typical float has, uh, has about six decimal, uh, that's in my numbers there you have got again something uh, something like that typically more or less like six uh, decimals that means uh, that means if you remember you might forget the dot obviously it's the same in all so we have about 12 10 to uh, 15 uh, 10 to 15 uh, digits and to 15 digits. Internally, the conversion is to take some uh, to string takes a, a little bit of a little bit of time. So that is uh, that slows down uh, that slows down the, mm, the sort. Again, if you have got 15 digits, again you can treat uh, each two consecutive or three consecutive character as one character. That means you will have. Uh, at most uh, five passes of a uh, radix sort, which is nice, but then the the uh, the conversion overhead and that conversion overhead much depends on on your machine, on configuration of that machine, on the uh, on the language used and and architecture of the machine. So uh, that's a, a difficult uh, stuff to assess now. Uh, so okay, let's move to to the to the next sort, uh, which is counting sort, and which is very uh, very simple. Uh, fortunately, so we uh, this radix sort its implementation is rather uh, complex, and this is a fortunately simple one. Uh, counting sort. What do we do? We've got some input array, and here it is unsorted array of some integer values, as you can see there. Uh, they are again sitting in some array which position are indexed again from one, why not? And also each, uh, in fact they say uh, that each uh, integer might be a key to some or a, specific, or a, a description of some, uh, of some object. So therefore we've got these, uh, when we have the same uh, the same values, we have different sizes of the attached information. So always more frequent than 10, that are small, bigger, and the biggest. So what they will uh, use this uh, to show that, uh, the, mm, that the counting sort is stable. Uh, so those are those are not just might be not just pure integers, but integers associated with some uh, with some objects as well. Uh, now what do we do? We say, aha! Uh -huh, let us count how many uh, how many values of each uh, of each uh, how many times each entry appears in the input array. So you've got, uh, you've got value 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, value 3 appears one, two times, only two times, so you write down two into your auxiliary array, and you can fill that auxiliary array with one pass uh, through the input uh, through the input array uh, because anytime you uh, increase uh, meet some value, for example, like eight, you increase uh, you increase the the value 
at position 8 in your auxiliary array. So now you know that you have 2 times 6 and you have 0 times value 7 in the input array. Uh, as you can see, the, this idea uh, works nicely when the biggest and the smallest uh, values in your input array uh, do not differ too much. If you've got, uh, for example, 3 and some other value will be uh, 45 trillion, uh, then you will need an auxiliary array of size 45 trillion, and that's, uh, that's too big. So uh, this, uh, the whole idea, again, is useful when your integers are from relatively, relatively, not 10 of thousands or something like that, a relatively small, uh, small uh, range. Now, when you, uh, when you filled all uh, this, it is obviously easy to go through, uh, through the auxiliary array and say, okay, we have two times three, so into the output array, you put two times three. There is no four, okay, no four, there is one five, so you put one five into, into uh, the output array. Now, of course, you have to do it uh, this cleverly, uh, just to retain the order of original uh, of original values in the input array, and because they are also associated with some uh, some additional information, you just you don't do just to put this uh, this six, for example, here. You have to transport there uh, six from position five. You have to transport that particular value with its uh, with its reference to their green data. You have to transport it here. Uh, so uh, no, that's uh, that's done on the next slide. On a, no, no, exactly not on that one, but on the next uh, five slides, uh, step by step. So what we do when we've got the frequency array, we fill it as we have seen it, and uh, and uh, uh, the. Uh, the code, the corresponding code is this trivial. For each element in the input array, increase the frequencies. Now comes the small trick, which says, okay, now this frequency array, this yellow uh, at the bottom, we will change it a bit. Uh, we will change it uh, that way, so uh, we, uh, we will make, in fact, uh, in fact a, uh, a change uh, which is a, a kind of prefix sum, uh, we leave uh, the first value we leave there, and into each value we uh, add uh, the, the sum of, uh, uh, of everything which precedes it. Therefore, what we know, uh, what we know that the value threes, which are two of them, the last position of uh, threes in the output array will be at... Uh, at index 2. The last position of 5s will be at position 5. The last position of all 6 will be at position 5 because there are 2 six, two times 6 in the input. The last position of 8 will be how many 8s are there? Are 4 times 8 in the input. Uh, 4 times 8. So, uh, uh, because there are 4 times 8, the, the end will be uh, 4 times uh, by 4 position uh, behind the end of the previous value, which is 6. So that is 6, there are four, 4 times 8, so that it ends at position 5, so this will end at position 9, and 10 will end at position 12, because there are three tens. Uh, so now this, uh, this so-called original frequency array now contains the ends of, uh, uh, of, uh, of particular, of uh, of segments which contain the same uh, value in the output array, so end of those segments are now registered. We can do it again with one pass through the input uh, through the input array, and when we've got that, then we go and fill the output array step by step, uh, which is relatively simple. So what we do, we go from the very uh, end of the input array. And what we repeat the following step: take the uh, take uh, that position, take the value at that position, and look into our modified uh, frequency array at position five. That is, here is the value; it becomes the index, 
and that is three. Uh, how what does it say? It says that all values which are uh, five, they end at position three in the uh, in the output uh, in the output array. That is the end of the segment containing only fives. Uh, so for all, all are right. Therefore, you take this five and transport it from position in the input array into position three in the output array, and there it sits. And of course, because now all the uh, now the segment which contains fives. Uh, uh, is shorter because, because last last of those was uh, is occupied by this. So the end uh, the end uh, of uh, of that segment containing fives must be uh, closer to the beginning. Therefore, you decrease this value uh, this value by one. On the next picture, it will be shown. It will be seen uh, much better. I hope uh, we have processed the last element. So now we move to the previous element on position 11. The what? Who is there? It is uh, value eight. Go to the modified uh, frequencies. It, it says that all po uh, all values eight will be sitting at position nine, eight, seven, uh, six, and so forth. Exactly as they sh have shown us to that uh, values eight. Values A, they will be din, din, din here, and we will fill that output array from the end. So first there goes the last value of all eights will appear, uh, will appear here, and it really uh, does it uh, because it is last in the output array, so it appears on this position. Therefore, all the other eights, which will come later and still are waiting in the input array, will appear at position eight, seven, six in the in the output array. So decreasing this nine to eight, we know that when we arrive to next a uh, eight after a while, it will be sitting at position eight because here they say it. Uh, and so on. So now uh, we process uh, this element number 10. It should, it, it is uh, element 10. It should go to position 12. So it is on the position 12. And, uh, and of course, next time when we come to any uh, element with, uh, with value 10, it will has to go uh, to go to position 11 in the output and so forth so that's uh, that's the whole uh, that's the whole story oh, and there is one uh, one more example after after a while when we have filled nearly everything all the elements are from position 12 to position 4 including were already processed no so now the last eight appears should appear at this position and uh, and that's it in fact uh, simple, uh, rather, uh, rather uh, simple uh, stuff. Uh, they do not even include on the slides uh, the discussion about stability. The stability should again be obvious because we take the elements in the order which is there uh, at the beginning and store them in the output array in the same order they were uh, previously. So stability is more or less obvious and uh, uh, and the complexity is also obvious because what we do we go through the arrays only three times first we go through the input array to create the frequency array then we go through the frequency array and modify it and then we go through the input array using the modified frequency array to build the output array so we need only uh, three passes so through some arrays and uh, we need some additional uh, extra space. Nevertheless, it is blindingly fast uh, because we have uh, uh, those three passes uh, do not uh, 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 depend on the size of, uh, of our input array. The size of this, uh, of this array, of course, the modified the frequency array depends on the range of values in the input array, and that's an important parameter. If that range is small, then of course, uh, this is a method of choice for sorting your integers. If the, that range of uh, input values is big, then it is, might be very questionable to use uh, 
uh, counting sort. And again, uh, the, uh, the other, the other uh, difficulty with uh, the counting sort is that it is very difficult to modify it uh, for working with floats or uh, any other kind of uh, kind of information. So with floats, it's nearly nearly impossible because you would need then uh, then a site to each float. You would need a site some uh, some integer which is not uh, not that uh, not that simple, of course. When you do not know what uh, what kind of floats you you get in general. Uh, so it is fast, but on the, on the other hand, we lose uh, we lose generality. Uh, so somehow to wrap up what we have seen uh, about uh, what we have seen in these uh, in these topics about sorting, we have seen few uh, few arrays. Uh, uh, sorry, few uh, few uh, sorts listed here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Now, what? Some of them are stable. Some of them are not stable. And on the other hand, some of them are fast, like these ones. And some of them are slow. And some of them are somewhere in the middle. Of course, the radix sort and counting sort we have seen today, there are not generally, not for general cases, especially for uh, for working with float numbers, they are. Uh, very, uh, very uh, clumsy to use, uh, and of course, uh, typically not that much effective. So this green uh, might be a little bit deceiving, but on the other hand, it is worth to see, to think about them because uh, they, in general, are are fast. Uh, so what's there? Oh, there is somebody. I think uh, this uh, too much of paranoia about bubble sort. So bubble sort just like another one. Of course, what is important is this: uh, this insertion sort sometimes might be uh, might be useful if you know that you have your uh, array. This array is typically relatively small, and there are some values which are pre-sorted, and there were some small changes. So if something is nearly sorted, it is not big, you go for insertion sort because it has easy implementation. And, uh, and of course, you can have floats, for example, so you don't have to refer uh, to, these, uh, to these less general uh, sorts uh, there at the bottom. Uh, so the, the picture says it's a complex question. It is not, uh, it's not just one. Uh, one sort which beats all uh, all others. Obviously, there are some sorts which are which do not beat any other sort. Okay, but there are uh, just for illustration. Let us say, uh, and uh, and then okay, you decide. Well, what the heck? So what will I do? You try some uh, some sorting experiment. You set up your uh, your machine. Write a code for. Uh, each of those sorts, uh, and then you somehow uh, submit to each sort uh, the same data again and again, and see what uh, what happens. Uh, so each data set or used is of sort array values generated by the pseudo random generator. Well, well, well. So you try something like that, and of course you run it repeatedly to get some uh, statistics. Uh, the conclusion of such an experiment is uh, that there is nothing, nothing optimal. Uh, it depends by, it depends on on many factors. In fact, strangely enough, uh, so you can then generate some table, something like that. You can say, well, I will try these sorts, uh, these sorts going sorting in teachers. And uh, there is the size of the array. There are very small arrays and the big arrays. Uh, here are just inside the table are the times measured in uh, in seconds. And each uh, each case is divided into two subcases. When the array is totally randomly shuffled, there is no uh, no uh, no order in it. Or sometimes you might get an array which is nearly sorted. 
It was originally sorted, and somebody made a few changes in it, and you went to go and you say, okay, let's sort it now after it was out there in for a week. They have made some small changes in my array, so now I am going and uh, resort it again. Uh, so uh, those are those are situations who, who wins. Uh, typically, so there is this, when the uh, data are big, uh, the, the contenders are quick sort and merge sort, and this regularity tells you that when it is nearly sorted, merge sort works better, and very probably it is because the, uh, the memory cache and such stuff, uh, because merge sorts typically works, uh, works uh, uh, it has uh, two, uh, two input array, two source and array, and one target array, and it moves in those uh, systematically from one side to the other. Uh, the indexes and the processed values do not jump uh, from one side to the uh, to the other. So that's uh, that's convenient for the uh, for the cache. Well, when you are working with a quick sort, then you start at the one side and the other side, and then you are jumping from left to right. Uh, so you make uh, make accesses uh, in uh, you in short time. You make accesses to very different pieces of the input array, so we jump from one side to the other. Uh, so, uh, so that's not good. But on the other hand, if they, the data are not pre-sorted, uh, the, uh, the, the quick sort is better because, uh, because typically when the data are uh, pre-sorted, it uh, probably happens quite often uh, that you uh, you process, you proceed uh, very uh, smoothly. You don't change. Uh, and what is important? Uh, and what is important that there is a lot of just pure copying of the data. So if you've got two parts, there is one sorted part. There is the other sorted part, but then uh, there are uh, the values are bigger. So first you merge. Uh, these two uh, parts of the data, you merge them, and the remaining part are the data which are everything bigger than, uh, than on the left side. So then you just take this part and move it, uh, move it, uh, move it to the uh, remaining part without checking anything, uh, just performing the shift in the memory, and that's uh, that's fast. So when it is pre-sorted, uh, the uh, the merge sort takes advantage of uh, of that of the data being pre-sorted. You can see that the differences are not that big, uh, but nevertheless they uh, they are measurable. Uh, what is the, uh, on the other hand, you can see when the data are small. Quick sort and merge sort, uh, they don't work that perfectly because they have uh, this organizational overhead. And who wins is this uh, is this insert sort. Uh, there, in one case, one heap sort. Well, uh, well, that if, well, you might think that if you rerun uh, the same experiment once more, you will might get a little bit sometimes, but that uh, nevertheless still is uh, rather interesting. Uh, the, the, when the data are, uh, are pre-sorted, then the insert sort uh, is very efficient, uh, because insert sort, when the data are nearly sorted, so there is just some occasional dent in your data, like that, so insert sort, in fact, uh, does not change the order of all those sorted data. So he spends no time uh, just uh, working around those, uh, working with those sorted data when it means something which is uh, out of out of that sorted order. Then it uh, it takes some time, but again. Uh, again, that's not if that value is bigger, and there is only one step uh, you have to jump around, and when the value is smaller, occasionally you have to move it forward, but there are no, no, not many of those typically. Uh, so, uh, so insert sort is going to be efficient on pre, on partially sorted data, and it really is. You can see that it is 
uh, it is significantly faster than uh, than the others. Uh, so, so, uh -huh. so again, it depends on the size of the data and the uh, and uh, uh, how much the data are uh, random. There is something uh, else, uh, even. Uh, even though those are the same numbers, which are just uh, which uh, just show you uh, show you uh, what uh, how uh, 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 the times are compared. Now the times are not in absolute values. Now they are compared uh, to quicksort. We say, okay, we have this quicksort. It uh, it uh, takes always one time unit to to do. Then how the others are are faster or or slower so you can see that in small uh, in when we have this small uh, small sizes then this uh, insert sort is a few times faster than a quick sort uh, that's about even four three to four times uh, faster there when the data are big then the uh, the uh, uh, the differences are not that uh, that big, so in, uh, it does not happen that merge sort is two times faster than quick sort or, uh, or vice versa in in any uh, any setting. So there you go, only for tens at most of ten of percent of uh, of improvement. Heap sort is of course comparable to this quick sort, but uh, generally it always uh, loses a little bit. Uh, uh, it loses a. a it's not the, uh, not the best, still uh, still quite uh, nicely uh, nicely performing, but very very few times it is uh, it is uh, it is better. So uh, select sort and bubble sort, of course, they uh, do not uh, compete in such in in real life. Uh, so that's uh, probably it uh, to, with uh, this uh, time. The slowdown again, it is the same. Uh, the sort of partially and uh, sort of how now, now you compare each each value whether it is better to sort with that particular sort is whether it is better to work or partially sorted data or totally uh, totally unsorted and you can see that sometimes it is better but that is all everything which was uh, which was in the previous uh, previous table only it is a little bit more emphasized and of course, heap sort it, uh, it does, it's not the best, and even it is not stable, which uh, which I remind you. Uh, so that's uh, that's all we can uh, we can say in these three uh, uh, lectures about uh, sorting. And the next time we will start a dynamic programming. So thank you very much, and see you next week. <laughs>